Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture series of organizational behavior. In this session, we are going to discuss about components of effective team. So let's begin. So we have already discussed in our last session how a team is useful for an organization and what should be the characteristics of an effective team. So now let's see what are the key components for making up an effective team. As you can see on the slide, there are four key components which can help to make an effective team whenever an organization is creating a team or we can say there is a model to create an effective team. So first one is work design. First category is work design. Second is related to the team composition. And the third one is the resources and the other contextual influences that actually makes the team effective. And the fourth key component is processes. Process variable that reflects those things that go in the team that actually influences the effectiveness of the team. So these are the four key components. Now let's see what is a model of creating an effective team. So now, as you can see in the slide, this model is basically, it has four key components and it is contributing towards creating an effective team. Here, when you see at the diagram, what does the team effectiveness mean that in this model? What we can make out? Basically, this has included the objective measure of team productivity, manager's rating of the team performance, aggregate measure of the member satisfaction. So we'll look at one by one all the four key components which is showing in the model here. Start from work design, composition, context and processes and what this model actually intended to do to create an effective team. Now let's understand what is work design in the model what actually that model says about the work design. So this category basically includes the variable like freedom and autonomy, the opportunity to use different skills and talents, and the ability to complete a whole and identifiable task or a product and working on a task that has a substantial impact on others. Right? So the, in, the evidence of this model shows that this particular work design these characteristics basically enhances the member motivation and increases their effectiveness. So the effective team needs to work together and take the collective responsibility to complete the significant task. As we said, work design includes the first key components. Work design includes basically the autonomy, what kind of a skill variety our members are having, task identity, what is a task significance. So these work design characteristics actually motivating the member because they increase the member's sense of responsibility and ownership over the work and because they make the work more interesting to perform. They are very motivated to do that work. So this first key component work design actually includes about autonomy, skill variety, task identity and task significance. Now let's see what is the second component of this model. So now first uh, key component for the model was work design in which the organization should understand what kind of autonomy, freedom and skill variety is needed to motivate the members. Now the second uh, key component of this model is this category basically includes the variable related to how team should be staffed actually, how the composition should happen. In this section or a category, we actually look about the ability and the personality of the team members, allocating roles and diversity, what should be the size of the team, member flexibility and the member preferences. Now, ability of the members means people with the, what kind of a skill a people should have. Basically, three kind of a skill is very much needed to complete the task. First is technical expertise. Second is people with the problem solving and decision making skill to identify basically the problems, 
to generate alternatives for the solutions, evaluate these alternatives, whether they are appropriate or not, make a competent choices and other interpersonal skills. So abilities of a member is first part when you staff or when you make or when you compose the composition happens for anything. Second would be personality. We all know personality has a significant influence on an individual behavior, which actually intended towards the team behavior. The next point would be allocating roles and diversity. What we can make out all the successful work teams to have a people to fill all these roles and have a selected people to play in this role based on their skills and preferences. So when we are we when it's all about composition staffing the members in the team so the uh, members should be allocated with the roles and that should be of diversify next would be member flexibility team made up of flexible individual have member who can complete each other task so that it should they should be flexible and adaptable so and selecting a members who themselves value flexibility they understand the meaning of flexibility and cross training them to be able to do each other's job whenever it is required according to the achievement of the task and obviously when there is a flexibility any member is able to adopt other roles and responsibility they are flexible to do the work so the team performance will be very higher over the period of time and the next point would be size when we are talk about staffing a team, that means we need to look on the size. Generally, it also depends on the what kind of a project it is. But of course, the, it should not be too large. It should not be too small. Next would be members' preferences. We all know every individual has a different behavior. And they are unique. They are they belong to different background. So they sometimes they are very high skilled very knowledgeable very flexible but they are not able to work in a group they are not they are not able to work in a team they are not the team player so we need to check when we are staffing a team we are making a team we should take the member preferences whether they are willing to work in that particular team or not so when selecting the team members individual preferences should be considered as well as when we are talking about abilities, personalities and skill, their preferences should also be accountable. Now, let's go to the next key component. Now, in the model, the next or the third key component is context. So, the contextual factor that appears to be most significant for team performance, like adequate resources, leadership and structure, performance evaluation and reward system. So when we say adequate resources, means all work teams rely on the resources which is made available to the, them. So, so that they can give the outputs, they can produce the results. So the scarcity of resources directly reduces the ability of the team to perform its job effectively. Next point would be in the context would be leadership and structure. Team member must agree to who is to do what and to ensure all members are contributing equally to sharing the workload. Nobody sh should feel overloaded. Nobody should feel they are left out. They are not given with any uh, responsibility. So leadership and structure is very much required to shape up the team. The team needs to determine how schedule will be set, what skill needs to be developed, how the group will resolve conflict and how the group will make and modify decisions according to the requirements. So leadership and structure is also one of the important aspects to look at. Next is performance evaluation and reward system. When we are working in a team, every individual should be rewarded as well as the team should also be rewarded. And in to if in addition to evaluating and rewarding employees for their individual contribution, management should definitely consider the group-based appraisals, profit sharing, gain sharing, small group incentives, and other system modification that will actually uh, make team more uh, reinforced and committed towards the organization. And 
climate of trust should be there. So this is all about the third key component of the model when we are creating an effective team. Now the last key component of the model is processes. The, this is the final category in terms of when we talk about how to increase the team effectiveness. So these actually includes the member commitment towards the common purpose, the establishment of specific team goals, what is the meaning of team efficacy, a managed level of conflict, which is also good. Conflict is sometimes very good or sometimes very bad and minimizing the social loafing. So like for first point is a common purpose. When we want to increase the team effectiveness, effective team have a common and meaningful purpose that provides a direction, momentum and commitment for the member. So common purpose is one of the aspects. Next is specific goals. Actually, when we say about dividing the responsibility, successful team translates their common purpose into the specific, unmeasurable, and realistic performance goal that can be achievable. So that they should target to achieve that particular specific goal. They should be motivated to achieve because they are so realistic. They are, they are thinking that that can be achieved. Next is team efficacy. Efficacy means team have a confidence that they are going to do this they should have a belief that they are going to succeed over the given period of a time whatever task has been assigned that could be completed next would be conflict level teams that are completely void of conflict are not really good for the growth and successful because they are likely to become apathetic and stagnant so conflict can actually improve the team effectiveness sometimes they increase the effectiveness next would be social loafing we understand the meaning of social loafing in a team maybe out of seven person only six person is giving all the effort and one person is hiding among all the six who is putting the effort they are not he is not he or she is not performing up to the mark which is they are required to do but since the team is so flexible they are putting all the effort the task is being completed so it is very common sometimes an individual can hide inside the group and they can get advantage of what others are doing. So successful team member make members individually and jointly accountable for the team purpose, goals and approaches. They are clear and they have a clarity actually what they are individual responsible for and why they are jointly responsible for and when they have to complete this task to have an organizational success. So this is all about the four model of uh, team effectiveness. In the next uh, session, we are going to discuss about what is the difference between group and team. Why do people prefer to join a group? What are the advantages and what are the reasons for joining anyone, any group? So, so thank you all for joining in this session. See you all in the next session. Thank you so much.